Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at orchestral timbres. So, an orchestra is usually divided into four different sections. We have the string section, brass section, woodwind section, percussion section. Throughout all the different eras of classical music, the orchestra just grew and grew, as well as all the different instruments that started to get invented and created. First of all, we're going to look at the string section, made up of four different kinds of uh, string instruments. We have the violin, viola, cello, and double bass. Sometimes you may have another instrument like a guitar or a different version of a guitar as well. Since it plays with strings, it would be in the string section. And here we have the highest pitch to lowest pitch, the smallest version of the instrument to the largest version of the instrument. They all have the same kind of uh, general shape, just different sizes. It's made up of the violin, viola, cello, and double bass, and the harp as well is included in the string section. But we haven't included the harp in this because its pitch range is so wide, so it wouldn't fit in this. So here on the highest pitch with the violin, next down, viola, then a little bit deeper, cello, and then the deepest is a double bass, as you can see in that small picture there, just like we discussed in the electric guitar, is finger picking it, but you can use a bow as well, just like all the other versions of the instrument to produce a sound. Now when a bow is used, it's called arco. Arco just means use the bow. And if it's plucked, like you can see in the picture of double bass, you can pluck any version of the instrument. You can pluck violin, viola, and cello as well. That's called pizzicato. Pizzicato is the plucking of the strings. So two different ways to play these string instruments, with a bow or arco, or plucking with the fingers, pizzicato. Now we're going to listen to a musical example. Now, if you missed the difference between arco and pizzicato, please do rewind, listen back to it, try to pick those out, because it's really important terminology there, arco and pizzicato. At the very beginning of that, you could hear the violin and viola had the melody and the cello and double bass was providing the harmony, and then towards the end, the melody went so low in pitch, went out of the range of the violin, the viola, down, down towards the cello and even the double bass. So. That is the string section. Now, we're going to look at the brass section. Brass, because obviously the instruments are made of brass. So, a brass section is said to have the strongest sound, with the most vibrant and metallic timbre of the orchestra. Often used for heroic themes, like in Star Wars, that dum dum da 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 dum dum. That's trumpet. And so, back in you know, the olden days when uh, cavalry would be used on the battlefield, brass instruments would be used to play certain melodies which would signal troops and cut across all the clatter of battle and signal troops to either charge, retreat, change formation, and give directions to all the troops on the battlefield. And there are four different instruments in the brass section of an orchestra. Going from high pitch to low pitch again, we've got the trumpet, the highest, the trombone, the French horn, and the tuba. And these instruments can change their timbre with what is called a mute, which, to be honest, looks like a, a, a metallic dog food dish, really, to, to people who don't know what they are, who can't identify it. And it's placed at the end of where the, the sound actually comes out, as you can see in the trombone over here. It's placed over the top of there and it's gradually opened to give a different sound. A fa fantastic example of this uh, for you to listen to for further listening is Minnie the Moocher from the Blues Brothers film. Uh, and it's towards the end of the film 
but you can just check out the song on YouTube, Mini the Moocher. At the beginning, there's a trumpet solo where he uses a mute specifically for that. So you can listen out for that timbre there. Now we're just going to listen to the brass section. So it's got a very loud, strong, clear, vibrant timbre. Now, the next section we're going to listen to is the woodwind section. Called woodwind because uh, it uses wind to actually produce the sound, whether you're blowing across the top of a hole like piccolo and flute, or whether you are using a reed to vibrate and send vibrations through the air down the rest of the instrument until it comes out the other end. And when all these instruments were first created, first invented, they were made of wood, which just makes sense. Woodwind. So in larger orchestras as well, fun fact, saxophones are also included in the woodwind section. Even though they're made of brass, they're technically woodwind because they use a reed, just like oboe, clarinet, and bassoon and contrabassoon, uh, in order to create the vibrations needed to play. So, going from high pitch to low pitch, we've got the piccolo, the flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, and contrabassoon. And these instruments are usually the quietest as well, which is why they're usually used without very much accompaniment from the rest of the orchestra, or if they do, it's very fleeting melody, usually lots of rapid, scalic melodies. However, we're not talking about melodies, we're talking about timbres. So it's a very windy timbre, a very breathy timbre, and depending on how big the vibration is, it can give it more of a bassy timbre as well. We're going to listen to this example. Beautiful stuff. Now, percussion. Percussion section of an orchestra can include so many different and sometimes strange sounding instruments, but it can include things like tubular bells, a massive gong, which just must be so satisfying to strike that at the end of a piece. Um, it includes xylophones, glockenspiels, and everything that is struck with a mallet, which is why technically the piano is part of the percussion family, because inside the piano there's a harpsichord used to pluck strings, hence why it couldn't change dynamics. The piano this has the strings struck with mallets, so technically piano is a percussion instrument. But in this version we're going to hear the claves, which is two wooden sticks hit together, the maracas, wooden containers of beans or rice with handles, also known as shakers, you shake it and it produces that sound. We've got bongos, the bongo drums, two different sized drums covered with a skin, and then we've got the standard drum kit, which is the same kind of drum kit used in popular music. Please do rewind that. If you couldn't pick out each individual part of that, it's quite easy to pick them out and it's important for ear training. So please do. If you couldn't figure out what is what in that clip, rewind it again, listen to it again. Or if you want to listen to the individual instruments as well, this is where I got the audio files from and um, the short videos from the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and he shows each individual instrument playing uh, a part as well. So you can listen to the overall timbres of each individual instrument as well. Please do check that out. It's a fantastic resource for training your ears to recognize different instruments and different timbres of the orchestra. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on orchestral timbres.
going through all the different parts of the orchestra. Next lesson, we are going to go through dynamics, and then that will be the end of all of these courses under the topic of elements of music as an introduction to the grounding of music theory needed for GCSE music. I'll see you in the next lesson for dynamics.